to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. While you're turning there, I want to make just a, a few comments. Mm -hmm. Folks, there is a spiritual warfare going on. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you. Uh, I think it's, it, I, I don't think the world has ever seen anything like it except maybe before the days before the flood. Uh, there is a great spiritual warfare going on. There is an attempt to manipulate such as I have never seen before. You say, preacher, manipulate who? Manipulate you. You and me. They're using, they're using scare tactics. They're using, they're using uh, uh, threats. They're using uh, uh, name calling. They're using labeling. They're using all kinds of things to force us, to manipulate us into a certain way. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. I want to preach to you. I want to, if, if God will permit, I want to preach to you on the subject, God rather than man. God rather than men. Look with me in the book of Acts chapter 5. I'm going to begin reading with verse 26 and I'm going to read uh, down to uh, verse 29. And the Bible says, then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. For they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine." And intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, how we thank you for thy presence in this house. We thank you, Father, for every soul that has come this way. And God, you know my heart. You know, Lord, that they have given something so precious. They have given their time. Something, Lord, that they can never, never get back. And Lord, we would not waste one moment of that time today. So we ask, Father, that God, this simply not be a time of gathering or a time of speaking. But God, it be a time, Lord, when thy Holy Spirit takes control. Where God, you control the very words that I speak. And Lord, that you open our hearts and our understanding. And Lord, we receive that, that God, you would have us to receive. Father, you know every heart in this house. And you know every need. God, I pray in Jesus' name. That, Father, you would meet that need today. If there's one here that's lost, I pray today, they'll be saved. God, I pray we as Christians will grow. Lord, that we'll learn. God, that we'll go forth, Lord, better servants for you than ever before. Draw us all close to thee. In Jesus Christ's name, Lord, we do pray. Amen. In the fifth chapter of the book of Acts, beloved, the apostles had been placed in prison. You see, if you read, beloved, the fourth chapter, you'll find that God was working mightily. That people were getting saved. That evil spirits were being cast out. That the sick were being healed. And that the gospel, the gospel, was being preached in power. Now, beloved, the, the high priest and the Sadducees, they did not like that. 
They did not like that, especially because they were preaching Jesus, his death and his burial and his resurrection. So, beloved, the high priest ordered uh, that, the, that they should be uh, arrested. Now, they had already been arrested and been put in prison, but an angel had come and miraculously, beloved, had set them free. And the angel told them, commanded them to go preach in the temple. So that's what they did. They got, the, the angel set them free. They went to the temple and were preaching Jesus. Now when the high priest and that crowd, beloved, heard that these men that were supposed to be in prison were preaching in the temple, beloved, they sent the captain of the guard to bring them in. And that's what he did. And they took, beloved, those apostles and they set them down before the council. And they said this. They said, did we not command you that you should not, uh, uh, that you should not teach in this name, in the name of Jesus? Let me tell you, folks. I love their answer. I mean, I love it. They look, beloved, these unlearned men, these apostles, look at these learned men and they said this. They said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. We ought to, I love that, don't you love that? We ought to obey God rather than men. Now, I got to look at, 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 verse, at this verse, verse 29. And beloved, the more I looked at it, four words, it was almost like, and I, I, y'all don't think I'm crazy, but it was almost like those words rose from the page. It was almost like they glowed to me. Four words. And the four words in this verse were, God rather than men. Think about that for a minute. God rather than men. Folks, what a slogan to live by. I mean, in these end times we're living in, God rather than men. Oh, listen, well, what a beacon, beloved, to guide us in, in this humanistic world that we live in. God rather than men. Than men. What a banner, beloved, to, to, to place over our children for them to follow. God rather than men. Folks, this little phrase is the stake, listen to me, it's the stake to drive into the heart of all the enemies that assail us in these latter days. Socialism, beloved communism, uh, globalism, all the other isms, beloved, that threaten to consume us. God, God rather than men. God rather than men. So profound are these four words. So meaningful are they for us today that God, beloved, gave me a message to share with you on just these four words. So let me share, them with, share this with you for a moment. Beloved, let it be first. Let it be God rather than men when it comes to our minds. When it comes to our minds. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible says this. Listen to this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Did you get that? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, what was the mind of Christ? Folks, it was the mind of God, amen? amen. He was God in the body of flesh, amen? amen? Folks, it was the mind of God. It was a mind, listen, to glorify the Father above all else. It was a mind, beloved, to do the Father's will, no matter what the price, no matter, beloved, how much it costs, to do the Father's will. Jesus said, beloved, I am come down from heaven not to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. 
the will of him that sent me. The mind of Jesus, beloved, was a mind, listen, that agreed with the Father on everything. I mean everything, beloved. No if, ands, or buts. No. If God said one thing, listen to me. If God said one thing, and the traditions of men said another, Jesus stood with God. Jesus stood with God. Beloved, if God said one thing, and the crowd, the multitude said another, Jesus stood with God. Amen? Amen. Beloved, if God said one thing, and the culture said another, Jesus stood with God. He stood with God. See, he knew, beloved, that God was true. He knew, beloved, he knew that, that the mind of God was pure. The mind of man was evil continuously, but the mind of God was pure. Amen. Was pure. It was God's true, this to me, God's true, pure mind. Against, beloved, the lying, evil minds of man. It was God's mind versus man's mind. And what Jesus said was God rather than man. God rather than man. He said, I'll take God's mind rather than the mind of men. Rather than the mind of men. Listen to this. When man's tradition said, hey, you can't pull kernels on the seventh day and eat them. You can't do that. That's working on the Sabbath. Jesus said, he said, man wasn't made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. For man. When the culture said, you can't speak to a Samaritan, especially a woman Samaritan, you're a Jew. Jesus said, I'll not only speak to her, I'll give her living water. Whoa, I'll give her living water. Beloved, when the crowd said, stone him, he's one of us, yet he makes himself above us. Jesus calmly walked through their midst. Calmly. He didn't say, oh, well, you know, you're the crowd. I better go with you. Whatever you say. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. When the leader said, blasphemer, you call yourself God, equal with God. Jesus said, if I do the works of God, if I don't do the works of God, don't believe me. But if I do, believe me for the works sake. For the works sake. Folks, Jesus didn't let, listen, man's traditions, man's culture, he didn't let, beloved, the crowds, in other words, peer pressure, he didn't let their leaders change his mind. It was God's man versus God's mind versus man's mind. Versus man's mind. And Jesus said, God rather than man. God rather than man. I'll keep the mind of God over the mind of man. And beloved, that's the mind, listen, that we should have in these days we are living in. Listen to me, and I hope I don't upset anyone. Beloved, there are a lot of forces working today to get you to surrender the mind of Christ to the mind of man. A lot of, of forces. The pressure is on, folks. Have you felt it? The pressure is on to get you to think that evil is good and good is evil. Beloved, the pressure is on for you to go along with the crowd. To go with the crowd. The pressure is on from our leaders. It's on from our news media. It's on from our academia. It's on, beloved, from the socialists and the communists and the globalists. It's on from the sports world. It's on, beloved, from the, from the Hollywood crowd. For you to think the way man thinks instead of the way God thinks. Right. Instead of the way God thinks. Preach it. Hey, if you don't, you're a racist. Come on, help me out. I'm by myself. If you don't, you're a white supremacist. If you don't think the way we think, you're intolerant. If you don't, you're a Nazi. You're a Nazi. Hey, you can't.
can't believe. All lives matter. You can't believe that. That's racist. What's racist about it? What's racist about it? Beloved, this God would have me to believe that all lives do matter. Whether they're white, black, red, green, yellow, purple, it don't matter. By the way, beloved, all is all, and that's all all is. All includes black. Amen? Amen. Amen. But you're a racist if you, don't, if you say all lives. You know what God said in the Ten Commandments? Thou shalt not kill. Literally, thou shalt do no murder. He did not draw a distinction between the race or the color. Thou shalt, thou shalt do no murder. No murder. So I got the mind of God, of Christ. And I'm going to keep that mind. I don't care what they say. Amen. I don't care what the crowd says. I don't care what the news media says. I don't care, beloved, what the world says. I don't care what this group or that group said. I'm going to keep what God says. That's right. right here. That's right. right here. Now, you see, they want you to accept their mind, man's mind, instead of the mind of Christ. They say, hey, you, you, you need to be with us on defunding the police. You need to be, if you're not, you're a white supremacist. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going to defund the police all across this nation because a man, a bad act, killed a man. But you're going to throw all the police under the same bus and do fun. So I'm going to preach this more than that, okay? Five, ten, twenty bad actors cross this, this thing. And you're going to throw, beloved, all the police away. Because you know what? If that's your reasoning, then you better, beloved, defund the hospitals. Because they've done some bad things. Amen? Amen. I mean, defund them. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, they kill people, beloved. Not meaning to, but they've done it. They kill people. You better defund, beloved, the government. Because, man, they're all the time messing up. Amen? Come on, help me out. You better defund them. Get rid of them. All the politics. Beloved, you better defund, beloved, the, 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 uh, the, the, the movies, the entertainment, because, beloved, those movies are, listen, destroying people. Right. They're destroying people. You better defund the schools and universities, because, beloved, they too have done wrong. In fact, you better defund everything, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Oh, folks, there's not a field, listen to me, there's not a field of science, of academia, of sports, of entertainment, of finance, of, of, of even, beloved, the church that has not had bad apples. But you want us to think like you, think like men instead of God. No, thank you. No, thank you. God loves. God forgives. God punishes the wrongdoer and moves in grace to the truly repentant. Amen. But the sad part is so many are giving in, beloved, to the pressure. So many. And I'm talking about people, I'm talking about corporations. Get it in to the pressure. So many are yielded to the crowds and to the leaders and to the educators and to, beloved, the counterculture. Do you see? Do you understand? It's your mind they're after. They want to change your thinking. 
to change your thinking. Let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. It's God's mind versus man's mind. And our answer should be God rather than man. Amen. God rather than man. Seven. It must be God rather than man when it comes to our faith. Our faith. When it comes to whom we believe. Whom we believe. Folks, everyone, everyone has faith in something or someone. But, but whether that faith is justified, listen to me, depends on how trustworthy your object of faith is. Let me say that again. Whether that faith is justified <laughs> depends on how trustworthy your object of faith is. Now, when you get right down to it, your faith is either in God or it's in man. One of the two. It's either in God or it's in man. See, when you strip, I mean, you can put your faith in a lot of things, but beloved, when you strip away the veneer, it's either God or man. Listen, you can put your faith in science, and a lot of people do, but who are scientists? They are men. Amen? Amen? With all the flaws of men. Amen? Amen. Beloved, you can put your faith in politicians. But who? Who are the politicians? Amen. Come on. Amen. Men. Men. With all the flaws of man. You can put your faith, beloved, in the military. And I love the military. But who are the military? Right. They're men. They're men. You can put your faith in education. But who are the edu educators? Man, and it on and on and on it goes. So, who is the most trustworthy? God or man? God. Oh, we got some folks awake on this side. I don't know about this side here. Let's try that again. Who's the most trustworthy? God or man? God. 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 Folks, listen. If there's one thing we should have learned in the year 2020, is that man is a liar and not trustworthy. Amen. Is not trustworthy. Amen. For years now, longer than I've been alive, if you can believe that. I mean, I'm talking about back in the 1800s is when it began. Beloved, man has been contradicting God. I mean, right in there. God has said one thing, man has said another. It began, beloved, with German rationalism and higher criticism, questioning the Word of God, casting doubt, beloved, on the truthfulness of God's Word, just like the devil did in the garden when he said to Eve, Hath God said? Well, that's what they began doing. Folks, at one time, listen to me, at one time, Almost everyone believed God's Word in the West anyway. Almost everyone believed God's Word. But with German rationalism and Darwin's organ origin of the species, which, by the way, these two came out about the same time. Beloved, with those two things, so-called science and academia, beloved, began to educate people on man, on man-made truth, which was really nothing in the world but lies, speculation. Speculation. Now at that time, at that time, in the 1800s, only beloved the wealthy went to college or to the universities. So, the educated, beloved, were the movers and the shakers. 
They were the wealthy. They were, beloved, the ones who had, who would turn out to be the leaders, who would turn out to be the teachers of society in the world. And they took, beloved, what they had learned about how smart man was and, and how wrong God was, they took it to the masses. To the masses. The teaching of evolution, beloved, the teaching of God's word being flawed, being wrong, filled the hearts of men the world over. And slowly but surely, new gods arose. New gods for man to put his faith in. And, and that new God, listen to me, was man himself. Man himself. Man in the form of science. Man in the form of education. Man in the form of politics. Man in the form of entertainment. Man in the form of finances. Even, beloved, man in the form of pastors in pulpits. And the world had a new God to put their faith in. And guess what? They decided, hey, we don't need the true God anymore. We don't need him. We've got all, we've got man, and all that man is comprised of. They said man will meet our needs. They said man will, will, will supply. Man will, will cure our sicknesses. Man will, will protect us. Man will feed us. Man will do it all. And so, people stop going to church. Stop going to church. Stop praying. Stop reading their Bibles. And generation followed generation. And beloved, people stop believing in God. They stop believing in God. But you know, they forgot one thing. They forgot that man is a liar. That mankind is a fallen race with a wicked, deceitful, depraved heart. And even though, beloved, God tells us, tells us, beloved, uh, that, 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 this, that that's the way man is, they wouldn't believe God. And they don't believe God. Even though, beloved, God showed us how wicked and depraved man is with Hitler and with Stalin. How wicked and how full of lies man can be. And still wouldn't believe God. So we get to the year 2020. And a pandemic strikes the whole world. And we look to our scientists, our leaders. We look to man. We've got faith in you. You will deliver us. What do we get? Lies and deception. As millions perish, the world. I shouldn't have said millions. I'm not sure. I may be right in that. Maybe I'll say thousands upon thousands perish. This causes, beloved, an economic disaster. We look to our bankers. We look to our wizards of finances and say, oh, you will deliver us. And still, it continues the world over. Riots, riots tear our cities apart. Disguised as protests. Now, I'm not saying there aren't real protesters out there. I believe there are. But beloved, they, they, they have disguised, these writers have disguised themselves as protesters. And cities burn and property is destroyed and people are hurt and killed. And we look to our gods, the mayors, the governors, our leaders, and still it keeps on. And suddenly, suddenly we realize 
Hey, they're talking crazy. I mean, they're condoning the violence, even encouraging the violence. Our gods. These false gods. And slowly but surely, it begins to sink in. Our man-made gods have lied. They have lied. Our gods are failing. Our gods have let us down. But oh, oh, listen. God bless the ones who are picking up the Bible again and beginning to put their faith in the one true living God. Amen. God bless them. They pick up the Bible and they hear God say, in the latter days, perilous times shall come. And they look around and say, they're here. They're here. God was right. They look at the Bible and they read the letter where God says that in the last days that they will heat in themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, teachers saying what they want to hear. And they look around. They say, it's here. God's right. It's here. They read and they hear God say, the love that in the last days evil men shall wax worse and worse and worse. And they look around and they say, it's happening. It's happening. God is true and all men are liars. Amen. Amen. The liars. And then they hear God say, for the Lord shall descend with a shout the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first and we that are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet him in the air. Amen. Amen. And they hear God say that at the end excuse me, that God say <clears throat> seven years of tribulation is coming on this earth a time such as the world has never seen nor ever will see again such a horrible, terrible time is coming, is coming, God says. And to hear God say at the end, Jesus will come down to the earth and he'll destroy the man who claims to be God and set up his kingdom on earth. And to hear God say, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, let him that is a thirst come. Let him that hear it say, Come, and whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of the life free. And they hear Jesus say, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will open the door, I will come in and sup with him. And they with me. But man and all her institutions say, no, 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 that's not true. Man is supreme. Put your faith in man, not God. No, God. But we say, God, God, rather. Than men. Amen. 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 God rather than men. That's who I will put my faith in. God rather than men. That's who the love of the apostles put their faith in. The mind of Christ, beloved, is the mind that the apostles had. And the question is. What will you choose? Will you choose God's mind rather than man's? Will you choose to put faith in God rather than men? Because when you do, listen to me, this is what I'm going to say, then it transforms to obedience. When you have the mind of Christ, beloved, when you, when you, beloved, have faith in all that God is and God says, it transforms to obedience to 
God and you say, we should obey God rather than men. Amen. Than men. God rather than men. What a banner. What a banner, beloved, for your mind. What a banner for your faith. What a banner for your obedience. Tell me. Who do you choose? Who do you choose? I pray. I pray it's God rather than men. I want you to bow your head to close your eyes. Heavenly Father, my God in heaven, you who know all things, who know the future, before it happens. You, God, who are pure and truthful, <coughs> sinless and perfect. Lord, it's your mind that I desire, the mind of Christ. Father, it's you that I put my faith in. Jesus, thy son. Not no, and yet God, you know that we're living in a time when the pressure is on. God, the devil, is using people to try and change us, to try and make us. Lord, surrender the mind of Christ and faith in God, I pray that God, we, as we realize this, that God, we as Christians, will fall on our knees. And God will say, Father, help us. Help us. Help our children. Help our grandchildren. Help them, God, to choose God rather than men. And Father, if every one in this time, Lord, if there be one that doesn't know for sure if they died right now, that they wouldn't go to heaven. That they would go to heaven. God, I pray that God will speak to their heart. And may they see Jesus with his arms open wide saying, Come unto me. Come unto me. And Lord, may they receive him by faith. As our Lord and Savior today. God save us so. Always we ask in Jesus' name. Every head bowed, every eye closed, would you stand with me?